In this video, we will examine the concept of consumer surplus. We'll learn what it means, how we can demonstrate it in simple maths, and finally what it looks like on a graph. In future videos, we'll have to remember this concept as we manipulate supply and demand diagrams, but for now, we will focus on the basics. Consumer surplus is the difference between what a consumer is willing to pay for a good or service and what they actually pay for a good or service. Now, you've probably encountered this in your own life when shopping for clothes. Perhaps you picked up an item that you thought was full price, and when you went to check out, the price was discounted. The price you were willing to pay and what you actually paid are different, leading to a consumer surplus for you consisting of the difference. In this table, we will be looking at three fictional consumers, A, B, and C, and the price they are willing to pay for a good, the price they actually paid, and their individual consumer surplus. Finally, we will total the market consumer surplus, which is the sum of all individual consumer surpluses. So you'll see consumer A is willing to pay $5 and only pays $2, therefore they enjoy a surplus of $3. Consumer B is willing to pay $4 and only pays $2 and enjoys a surplus of $2. Finally, consumer C is willing to pay $3 and only pays $2, so they will enjoy a surplus of $1. The total consumer surplus would be the sum of these three, which will be $6 in total. Now, I want to recap quickly uh, market equilibrium graph, so just bear with me for a moment. So when laying out our diagram, it is important to note that price is on the y-axis and quantity is on the x-axis. Uh, the demand curve is downward sloping due to consumer behavior, and the law of demand states that as price falls for a good, quantity demanded will increase. We label it D. The supply curve is upward sloping due to seller behavior, and the law of supply states that as price rises for a good, quantity supplied will increase. The label for this line is S. Market equilibrium occurs where supply and demand intersect. This is where the market clears. Hypothetically, this is a point of maximum efficiency, where producer and consumer welfare is maximized. And now we're going to take a look at how you measure that consumer welfare. We've got an idea from our previous slide, but let's step in a bit further. Now imagine that there are 12 customers for this product. Here's how the consumer surplus would look like on the graph. The first customer is willing to pay a higher price for this good because they really desire it. So although P-Star is a market price, they're willing to pay a much higher price. The second customer is willing to pay a higher price, but a little less than the first. And this trend will continue for the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, all the way to the 11th customer. Eventually, the individual consumer surplus will equal zero at the market equilibrium price. The 12th customer purchasing the Q star unit will only be willing to pay P star for it. Therefore, there is no surplus for this customer, and at this point, we say consumer welfare is maximized. Now, when drawing or manipulating this diagram, I always insist students follow this approach. Label all your points with letters so you can easily reference the shape. The entire area under the demand curve and above the market price is our consumer surplus. In this case, the surplus is P star E P1. And in a future video, we will manipulate market equilibrium and see how consumer surplus changes. For now, be able to draw it as such and be comfortable with the concept. So just as a reminder, this is our consumer surplus, and I label it P star E P1. I don't refer to it as the shaded area. I'm only doing that to highlight this for you, for your purpose. And one thing I would like for you to mention, uh, for you to remember, in your exam, use letters to demonstrate the area of consumer surplus. Shading can lead to confusion for both you and the examiner. And this strategy will make more sense when we take a look at manipulating consumer surplus. But for now, practice drawing this over and over and it will start to stick. I'll include a link for the PDF version of this presentation for your notes. And feel free to get in touch with any questions in the meantime. Leave a comment below and I'll be sure to respond.